So this is the second big piece of information that dropped. Information, a yeah, big story that dropped yesterday on Christmas Day of all days. I didn't think any lawsuits would be ruled upon, but hey, you can never ever discount these people who just don't want to do their job. It's like if there's a turd on the floor, nobody wants to pick it up. They'll just kick it around with their feet and make up reasons why they can't touch it. It's like, oh, I don't have gloves. Eh, is it really? Is he can just kind of put uh, push it off in the... This is what they're doing with all of these election suits. They know it stinks. They know it's going to be a problem later. But at the same time, eh, just fucking put something over top of it and it'll, it'll go away. This is kind of what happened here because, okay, it's a little bit different in every state. And because, of course it is because it's something to do with the election. Every state is a little bit different. There are three state or there are three courts in every state, though. This is something that they all share in the share in common. There are the circuit courts, there are the Supreme Courts, and then there are the appeals courts as well. There, the circuit court is always your base level court. That's where all your civil cases go, and that's where your non-criminal, just kind of like divorce cases go. Your circuit courts, or your civil courts, sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, Everything just gets decided there, and then there's the Supreme, and then there's the appeals courts. And that's where it kind of gets flip-flopped, okay? Sometimes the Supreme Court is the next step up from your civil courts. And then your appeals courts are on top of those. And then in some states, it's flipped around because, you know, you should probably have your Supreme Court as your last court of resort. But that's not how it works in some states. And that's how it is in here in Wisconsin. Once it goes or has to bypass the civil courts, it goes into the Supreme. And then if anything happens there, you can appeal it up to the appeals court. So this was the final stop for this lawsuit. It can go up to the Supreme Court of the United States, but we already can hear them crumpling up the paper in advance. So what would be the point? Not saying that it can't end up there. I'm just saying, don't get your hopes up for this one because it's another instance of just three justices who ruled on this case. Okay. They didn't hear any oral arguments for the case itself. We have it pulled up here and we're going to take a look at the ruling. It was the three three judges ruled on this one from the appeals courts. One's a Reagan appointee, so Buddy's been around for fucking ever at this point. There's not even a United States Supreme Court justice that was appointed by Ronald Reagan still on the bench. I'm pretty sure Scalia was the last one because Thomas is the longest serving one. Uh, he was appointed by H.W. And another one was appointed by W. And another one was appointed by Trump. And it's weird because they did some background on him as well. Brett Ludwig is his name. And he has some fucking smooth brain takes on this one. He's not, as far as I can tell, a federal Federalist Society appointee as well. So I don't know if this guy's just off the reservation or he's just been hanging out with people hopefully... Hopefully he can get membership into the Federalist Society. I've had my grievances with them. It's a big neocon think tank, so that's what I think about them. And they all vehemently dislike Trump anyways. And because a bulk of Republican or at least conservative judges and lawyers come from the Federalist Society, when you're appointing judges to these different positions as well you're kind of fucked right now because there's no real alternative and whoever controls the Federalist Society ultimately controls the courts. You kind of get what I'm saying. Save the tin hats or tinfoil hats, but that's pretty much how the courts work. It's politics is corrupt. Let's, let's be completely honest, but let's get into the bulk of this story because federal appeals court tosses Trump's election lawsuit in Wisconsin. I got some shit to say because we got the actual lawsuit pulled up if you see up there in the tabs. Anyways, federal appeals court on Thursday dismissed President Donald Trump. It was Christmas. Come on, why can't you put that on a Merry Christmas afternoon? President Donald Trump's lawsuit was dismissed by Wisconsin. It that sought to declare the election officials had acted unconstitutionally during the 2020 presidential election. And like we've seen before, and like we're going to see here in a minute, it was all about the unconstitutionality of sending out all of those mail-in ballots, which is kind of cut and dry, but we'll get into their logic here in a minute. And then also the drop boxes as well, which gets glazed over like honey on a ham that you might have had. The three-judge panel in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit ruled to uphold a lower court decision rejecting the president's case that argues that the 2020 election in Wisconsin was conducted in an unlawful and unconstitutional manner. The federal judge previously mentioned, Brett, Lud Brett Ludwig, opined that Trump had failed to show that Wisconsin election officials had violated the right under the Elector's Clause in the United States Constitution and that the challenge lacked merit because he only objected to the administration after the er, administration of the election. So Justice Ludwig said that be, 
because there's some laws that are there that were put in unconstitutionally, but they're still laws anyways. The claim lacks merit because you're pointing out the unconstitutionality of those laws. That's definitely one way for a judge to rule. Instead, Ludwig said that he found that Wisconsin's presidential electors were being chosen in a manner very or in a very manner directed by the legislature as required by the Constitution. Yes, because Tony Evers rushed to certify his Democratic electors because he's been bestowed the power by uh, by the legislature. Therefore, ha ha ha, no take backs. We agree that Wisconsin lawfully appointed its electors in a manner directed by the legislature and adds that the president's claims also fails because of the unreasonable delay that accompanied the challenge with the president now wishes to advance against Wisconsin's election procedures. Oh, this is where we get into the hot stuff. See how fancy their letterhead is? Oh, isn't it delightful? We'll just go through some of the hot stuff here. The president's complaint alleges that the commission in the issuing this guidance expanded the standards for identi- Oh, indefinitely confined voters. That's when they were all using COVID as a reason for to get a mail-in ballot, even though that's constitutionally not allowed. But it doesn't much matter. If you have a law on the books, but you don't enforce it, you don't really have a law pretty much what we're saying here they're just using them all willy-nilly because nobody wants to get their fucking hands dirty is the long and short of this invited voter fraud by authorizing the use of unstamped oh unstaffed drop boxes and misled municipal clerks about their powers to complete or correct address information on absentee ballots all contrary to wisconsin t- statutory law so he acknowledges this in the setup for his ruling but doesn't do anything about it the president sought deck or declaratory and injunctive relief on the view that these alleged misinterpretations of state law infringed and invaded upon the Wisconsin legislature prerogative and directions under the Elector's Clause Article 2 of the United States Constitution. Yes, not constitutionally selecting your electors because you are contradicting your own state laws and constitution that allow you to assign the electors based on the general election as you can see there's a lot of mental gymnastics going on here after the evidentiary hearing the district court rejected the claims or the president's claims on the merits and entered judgment for the commission and other defendants that was the first time that this one was bounced up and then hit the appeals court right after this i I'm pretty sure we covered this one, but all of these lawsuits are starting to run together because they all just get dismissed without hearing and for fucking reasons of standing and latches, which we'll get to in a second because, oh, oh my gosh. The elector's clause, the court determined, addressed the manner, the approach, the form and method or mode by which Wisconsin appointed its electors for Wisconsin. That means only by general ballot at the election Oh, at the general election. With the court further observing that any mistakes in administering the election did not change, that the electors were appointed by general election. That's what the previous court stated, but uh, at the same time didn't acknowledge that they expanded and changed their rules based on that. Anyways, the president promptly appealed and we expedited the case for decision. And let's get to that decision because, buddy, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really stupid and slow. Here's what this fucking brainlet alleges here as well. The timing of the election litigation matters. Any claim against the state electoral procedure must be expressed expeditiously, citing a couple of cases there. The Supreme Court underscores the precise point in the very election cycle in respect to the very state. See Republican and other case as well. The court's direction was clear. Federal courts should avoid announcing or requiring changes in election law and procedures close in time to voting. Well, at the same time, you had unconstitutional laws that you didn't know were going to be enforced when it came to the elections. Prior to this election, they had not been used because they were not on the books and because they were fucking unconstitutional. Obviously, you can't just make up your mind about what you're going to do with the election all willy-nilly. Otherwise, you don't really have a legitimate election. But this is what this guy's saying. That um, This is when you hear the term latches. Latches refers to a late case that you're bringing up, a, a, a late lawsuit that you're trying to place out there where you've waited too long and it's no longer relevant for the court's to apply any sort of remedy based on the lawsuit that you're bringing up. And that's what he's alleging here with the president. He waited too long. He waited after the election in order to sue. Here's where the mindfuck is at its zenith for me. You couldn't sue beforehand because you didn't know that the drop boxes were going to be unmanned, unsecured. You didn't know that ballot harvesting was going to occur. You didn't know 
that COVID was going to be an accepted reason for indefinite confinement. So how could you sue beforehand? If you were going to place all of those as evidence for your lawsuit prior to the election, you would have been thrown out for a lack of standing. See how that comes in? And then when this election lawsuit got filed here, after all of this stuff came out, they're saying that, uh, yeah, this lawsuit is bogged down because there's a whole bunch of latches here because this happened afterwards, and you can't sue based on that because you waited too long. When was the opportune time to sue? Just after the polls closed or just before the cl polls clo closed? What did you want the lawsuit to be thrown out on? Based on latches or based on standing? That's all it's come down to at this point. It's only 11 pages long. I won't read through every word of it, but uh, we'll just go ahead right to the end. You guys can feel free to read through this as well. It's um it, quite a great example of somebody who just doesn't want to do this, doesn't want to get his hands dirty. It's another reason why the Texas lawsuit got thrown out, okay? You hear that uh, this is a state issue. You should be going state to state in order to figure out what state laws violated each, okay? Just because there might have been an unconstitutional election in one state doesn't directly affect another state. So just because Texas followed all of their rules doesn't mean that Wisconsin or Pennsylvania, Michigan, or Georgia diminished their legal electors in any single, in any way, because they don't have standing in order to sue the states that didn't conduct their election properly but then when you go these states to states you say that you waited too long and then also as we see here we confine our conclusions to application of the electors clause we are not the ultimate authority on wisconsin law they are the final court okay that responsibility rests with the state supreme court who kicked it up to the appeals court Put another way, the errors the president alleges occurred in the commission's exercise of the authority of the main matters of state law. They belong then in the state courts where the president had an opportunity to raise his concerns. That's where the lawsuit started. Are you fucking stupid? And they threw it out for the same reasons. Ah, they just didn't want to see it. Ah, it's, it's not our, it's, it's not for us to decide. This is a federal matter. Okay, we'll kick it up to the appeals court. Ah, no, it's a state's matter. Who's, it, who's that a matter for? Indeed, the Wisconsin Supreme Court rejected his claims regarding the guidance on indefinitely confined voters, e. Biden v. Trump. Yeah, previous one that was down there and then got kicked up here. So, and declined to reach arrest for his arguments on a ground of latches because he waited too long because nothing had been committed prior to when he could have sent out the lawsuit. So you waited too long because you had to prove that there was something wrong that was happening and because that occurred, latches. Nah. See, I was reading this and I was listening to a couple of breakdowns based on it and uh, my mind was just running in circles on this one because, okay, Texas didn't have standing for these exact same claims because they were supposed to go to a state to state issue and then the state to state issue becomes a federal issue because that's what the president is suing on and the lawsuit was too late even though all of the claims are still valid and nobody still wants to see the evidence because there's rules that we can see here up at the top we have agreed to decide this case without oral argument based on the briefs and records adequately presented the facts and legal arguments and oral arguments would not be significant aid to the court citing a rule that they have Okay, so somebody explaining this to you doesn't help out its case. Yeah, that makes sense. You just really didn't want to do your job. Just just say that. Just say that. Well, they did say that. Down there at the bottom. Ah, you waited too long. Eh, it's a federal issue. Oh, you already took this to the federal courts and they told you it was a state's issue? Eh, it's not my department. Hold on a second. I'll put you through to my supervisor. So yeah, let's get another take on it from the Epoch Times here. The president filed a lawsuit against the Wisconsin Election Commission and other state officials on December 2nd. Waited too long. Oh, okay. Um, also, I had to wait for the recounts to be done. Alleging that they violated the Constitution and WEC issued guidance on missing or incorrect absentee ballots, witness certificate or certificate addresses voters claiming indefinitely confined status and absentee ballot drop boxes the lawsuit argues that wec lacked the power to issue the guidance that violates the state's own election laws and passed the wisconsin state legislature remedy the situation trump asked the court to declare that election officials had violated the constitution their constitution state constitution and order the wisconsin legislature to provide appropriate relief pursuant article 2 section 1.2 in the constitution the appeals court said it only reviewed the case within the scope of the electors clause and did not venture into deciding state law well it's like third wave and fourth wave fe fourth wave feminists viewing everything through a lens of feminism everything's racist everything's sexist then you have to point it out 
just viewing it through that narrow scope does the claims disservice. Okay, you're supposed to be applying the elector's clause to the state level, but you're not using the unconstitutionality of some of those state's laws that were forced through by a body that doesn't have the rights to enforce them. It's so silly. <laughs> so it's tough to say where this case goes from here, okay? It might mean that Wisconsin's dead off the map. Their 10 electoral votes are going to go to Biden and secure the downfall of Western democracy. Sorry to be so morose, but you know, it's fucking weird. But we got kind of, I, I don't know if this is going to go anywhere. I don't, I don't know if this is going to really amount to anything on January 6th when the votes actually start mattering from these electors. But this came out not long after. After that ruling came down, Wisconsin lawmakers joined the lawsuit to block certification of presidential presidential electors. So if they aren't going to reverse the electors, they're going to ask that those 10 get pulled off the board. Two Republican lawmakers in Wisconsin have joined a federal lawsuit that seeks to block the counting of elect electoral college votes from several contested states in the Congress meets on in a joint session January 6th. Wisconsin State Reps Jeff Merceau and David Steffen signed onto a lawsuit filed on Tuesday in the United States District Court of the District of Columbia by the Amistad Project of the Thomas Morris Society and the Wisconsin Voters Alliance, among others. Also on these lists of plaintiffs are two GOP members of the House, or the Michigan House, Reps Matt Maddock and Dari Rendon. Hopefully I got that right. According to the complaint, Terry Attorney Eric Cardle of the Amistad Project and Thomas Morris Society argued that in the complaint that the legislat state legislatures of Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Arizona were prevented from exercising their power under the United States Constitution to certify the presidential electors' votes cast on December 14th. State legislative post-elector certifications of presidential votes and the presidential electors are a part of the constitutionally protected voter rights, Cardle wrote. Everyone who votes distinguishable from those who don't have a constitutionally protected interest in the state legislative post-election certification of presidential electors, the defendant violates those voting rights by counting ballots of presidential electors without the constitutionally required state legislative post-election certification. Under Article 2 of the United States Constitution, presidential electors, electors must be appointed by each state in a manner prescribed by the state's legislature. A lot of information there and a very obtuse way of saying nobody's listening to our evidence that says that there was some funny stuff happening with this election. And because you aren't going to do that, we aren't going to certify your votes. That's what they're trying to do. Not saying that they're going to, but I don't know. Well, I do know based on what we've been seeing here, it's just going to go, oh, cool. There are textual and structural arguments for the state's statutes being unconstitutional, he wrote in the lawsuit, arguing that the state's laws are an unconstitutional delegation of the state legislative prerogatives of post-election certifications of presidential votes and presidential electors. The lawsuit also argues that state legislatures, many which are adjourned until January 21st, are also being prevented from being or for meeting to perform their post-election certification duty. We know that happened. Tom Wolf is not going to call a special session. Uh, Brian Kemp in Georgia is literally just saying words and not following through with any actions. And uh, Gretchen Whitmer couldn't be asked to get off her fucking ass, other than saying that she was relieved that she wasn't going to be the running mate for Biden. And Tony Evers is fucking ancient. And yeah, that about covers everything. Nobody else wants to make special. Oh, and... Uh, a COVID in Arizona, if you can fucking believe it. Because Doug Ducey can't be out rhinoed by Brian Kemp. Ugh. The very body that is responsible for how these electors are selected can't even meet after the election up through January. So that's unconstitutional. Yeah, but you waited too long to file your... <laughs> Ugh. Let's, let's finish this. In the delegation of authority to the governor of a legislative function, that is not allowed. Phil Klein, director of the Amistad Project, told the Epoch Times American Thought Leaders Program. The defendant in the lawsuit includes Vice President Mike Pence, both houses of Congress and officials from the five battleground states. States, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Notable off that is Nevada and New Mexico, which I 
haven't heard anything about that lawsuit, but perhaps they're just taking a long siesta over the holidays. Whatever. Listen, this lawsuit had something about drop boxes and it got tossed and that's the entire crux of that New Mexico lawsuit as well. So <laughs> I'm not fucking holding my breath on that, but we'll see what happens with this lawsuit and we'll see what happens with this special lawsuit now that Wisconsin lawmakers have hopped on this one as well. Like I said, it sounds right it's bringing up the right causes there it's not telling anybody to take a look at ghosts in machines it's just merely saying hey follow your own co your own constitution but i will imagine whoever gets to see this first will tell tell them that it's somebody else's problem that they'll have to take a look at it and then they'll take a look at it and say no 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 this is a federal matter and you waited too long and you can't sue for this because you didn't directly incur any harm so either it's not my job you waited too long, or who are you? That'll probably be one of the rulings. I don't know what's going to happen, but like I said, I think January 6th is the only opportunity that there's going to be where any of this evidence is going to properly come to light when the two houses, as long as a GOP senator steps up at this point and says, hey, you know what, I'm going to do something about this. And that is the only thing that we're kind of waiting for. And um, yeah, I'm not saying 2020 is lost, but I think the odds of Trump pulling this through at this point is probably, I'm probably a little bit more bullish when I say about... 10 to 25 percent there's a chance it's not a big chance but there is a chance there because hey there's at least something in the constitution and there's rules on the books in order to make this happen don't be shocked though if we're the overwhelming opposition for the next four years and we're gonna have a voice in this regardless so hopefully you'll join me on that anyways that's what's going on in the cheese state there i guess they can go packers for the next fucking few weeks i think they made the playoffs i'm pretty sure they won the nfc north anyways i thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone